Hi friends, it's Julie. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with my August slash like early September wrap up for you guys. I have read quite a few books so I'm going to break these up into fiction and nonfiction because I read quite a bit of nonfiction over the last month. I kind of went down like this true crime like rabbit hole um, but I'm going to put timestamps down below so if there's something that you don't want to listen to you can skip ahead and because this is probably going to be a little bit of a chatty video but I'm excited to talk to you guys about all of these books so let's just get started. So to start things off, I'm going to talk about fiction books first, like I said, and the first one is The Lost Queen by Signe Pike. This is a book that I just randomly picked up at the library. I actually thought it was going to be a fantasy book, but it's more historical fiction with a little bit of magical elements, I would say, but this book just sounded like something I would really enjoy, and I did. So in this book, we are following our main character, who is this woman named Langareth, and she is actually the twin sister of the man who inspired the story of Merlin. So this book is taking place in, like, ancient Scotland, and you have Langareth and her family who still worship like the pagan old gods. They still do all the rituals, things like that. And so those kind of magical elements are thrown into this book. However, Christianity is starting to come to their area. So these different people really butt heads. There's lots of different political like war things going on at this time. And I just really, really enjoyed this story. It gave me like Juliet Merlier Seven Waters vibe. So I think if you enjoyed Juliet Merlier's writing, I think that you're gonna enjoy this book. Um, I did have a few criticisms Number one was I thought that the romance was a little rushed. I kept waiting for there to be like some like a magical connection between these characters because it's kind of implied that there's like enchantment that brings them together, but that's ne never really elaborated on. So for me, I just felt like the romance was very rushed and I'm a slow burn romance girl. So that did irritate me just a little bit, although there are some pretty steamy scenes in this book, which I did enjoy. And then the other thing was I... I struggled with some of the decisions that Langareth made throughout the book. Um, it kind of infuriated me at some points, like I understood why she made some of these choices, but she was so stubborn and hot-headed, and she you just couldn't, like, other people just couldn't, like, reason with her at times, and so that kind of irritated me a little bit, but I do plan on continuing on. This is going to be a trilogy, and typically you guys know that I don't start books in like a trilogy or a series till more books are out but I really just felt like reading this book at the time so I do think I'll continue on with it and if this sounds at all interesting to you then I do recommend picking it up. Then the next book is one that I listened to on audio and that is An American Marriage by Tayari Jones. This book was very popular I believe like last year it made like Obama's top books of the year I think or something like that and I did enjoy the audio book I thought that the narration was done really well it's a pretty short book too However, I just really couldn't connect to the characters in this story. So in this book, we are following Celestial and Roy, and they are this black couple living in the South, and they've only been married like a year when Roy is accused of this crime that he didn't commit, and he's actually sent to prison for it, and so some of the story is told from like letter format, so we're getting letters back and forth between Celestial and Roy while he's in jail, and he's in prison for, I think, I want to say like at least five years um, before her family like eventually gets him out. Her family has money and they get a good lawyer, and eventually they do get him out of jail, but by the time he's out, Celestial has like moved on with parts of her life while Roy obviously hasn't, and like I said, I just really couldn't connect to the characters because honestly, <laughs> I didn't like Roy. I thought that he was an asshole. Like, yes, I felt really, really terrible for him and his situation. However, like, before he even goes to jail, he cheats on Celestial quite a few times, and I just really couldn't get behind that, and I just really didn't care for him. But I did like in this book how it really focused on their relationship and, like, the breakdown of this relationship. I really like books like that where you see, like, the nitty-gritty and because that's more real to me. I don't, you know, I'm not one of those people who believes that the, you know, life is just all sunshine and rainbows and things like that. So I really like those hard-hitting books and this one definitely does that. However, like I said, I just really couldn't connect to the characters. But I do think it's an important read and it really does make you think about all the other people who are probably sitting in jail for crimes that they didn't commit, which is just absolutely horrible. So on one hand, I do recommend it. On the other hand, I just didn't really connect to it. Then the next book I just briefly want to talk about is one that I have quite an unpopular opinion about, which isn't unusual for me. However, I will explain 
my reasonings for that, and that is Lock Every Door by Riley Saker. This is like the hit thriller of the summer, and I completely understand why people are loving this book. It's different, it has some horror elements, it's fun. It's definitely a fun book. However, I had just read Rosemary's Baby last month, and this book, it just really rubbed me the wrong way because so many things were similar to Rosemary's Baby. There were twists that I knew were coming because of Rosemary's Baby. And that just kind of irritated me a little bit and it took my enjoyment out of the book. Yes, this one is about this main character named Jules and in Rosemary's Baby we're dealing with a couple. However, in both of these stories they move to these old historical buildings where there's lots of like mysterious backstories surrounding the buildings and the people living in them are weird. And I will say the ending is different, thank goodness. However, there were just too many similarities that I just couldn't get on board with it. But I want to say that if you have not just read Rosemary's Baby, I recommend picking up Lock Every Door if you're in the mood for a super fun thriller. I think you're going to love it. I think I would have if I wouldn't have just read the other book. Um, but because I had, it just didn't work for me. So. If you have previously read Rosemary's Baby, like very recently, I put off reading this book for a little while and then come to it. Um, like I said, that's just why it didn't work for me, but I think for everyone else, like the majority of everyone else, they're going to love this one. Then the last fiction book I read was one that I loved, and that was Off Season by Jack Ketchum. I don't know if I should say loved, but I really, really enjoyed it. Um, this was one of like the bloodiest, goriest, nastiest horror novels I've ever read, and I was there for it. Like this is about this group of people who are staying in this cabin in like the backwoods of Maine. And little do they know that there is a group of cannibals who plan on going and killing them and then eating them. And that's what happens in this book. And it is a bloody good time. Like this was just, I literally sat there reading my book and was just like this like the entire time. Like it was so horrific, but I loved it. So I do wanna say, do not pick this book up if you do not like body horror. Don't pick this book up if you don't have a strong stomach because there are some really nasty graphic scenes of these cannibals eating these people. Like, it's in detail. So do know that going into it. But if you like backwoods horror, you like cannibals, highly recommend picking this one up. Um, I read the uncut version, which I do recommend. And yeah, this was just really good. I do plan on continuing on with the series because I have heard that it's pretty good as a whole. So yeah, this was my first Jack Ketchum. I don't plan on reading The Girl Next Door. That book, I just, I just couldn't. I think that would be too much for me, but I wouldn't mind picking up some of other, um, some of Jack Ketchum's other books. Now moving on to nonfiction, the first one is From Here to Eternity, Traveling the World to Find the Good Death by Caitlin Dottie. And I had previously read Smoke Gets in Your Eyes by Caitlin Dottie a few years ago and really, really enjoyed it. It talked about her time um, working in a crematorium and being the person who burned the bodies, as well as it touched on death practices from like around the world. <clears throat> Sorry. And in this book, that is mainly what she's focusing on, like the death practices around the world. And I just thought this book was so fascinating. Um, each section is broken up by like a place and like the first one is about a place in Colorado where if you're a part of this little community or like own land there you can have your body burned on a funeral pyre out by the mountains and I just thought that was so fascinating. I've actually looked into buying land out there because I can't think of a better way to go um, for my body to go you know and land out there isn't very expensive as of yet but probably when more people read this book it probably will go up. Um, but yeah, I just thought this book was so fascinating. I definitely recommend it, as well as I recommend Smoke Gets In Your Eyes because they're both just really well written and just so interesting if you have any sort of like morbid curiosity. Now moving on to true crime. The first book I read was American Predator by Maureen Callahan. And this is a new nonfiction like true crime book that just came out over the summer and I really enjoyed it. I think that if you enjoyed I'll be gone in the dark, then you're really gonna like this one. It is narrative nonfiction, just like the other is, and I was just really sucked into the story. So this is about the serial killer, Israel Keys, who was caught in 2012. And he was caught after he had kidnapped this woman in Anchorage, Alaska. She was working at this coffee kiosk and he kidnaps her and um, he takes her debit card and then used it all over the United States. And he was eventually caught in Texas and a lot of this book is told in like interview, like he's talking about the interviews with Israel Keys and them trying to figure out how many other people he has killed, which 
they'll never know the amount of people he's killed because um, he actually committed suicide in 2012 in jail and there was lots of really shitty things that happened with like the jail system and stuff surrounding him and that's brought up in this book but the interviews with this man I mean he was just he was just evil and he had planted these kill kits all over the United States and anytime he felt like just killing someone he would just go and do it and he had no like specific person he went after or anything like that it was just anyone who was available and they've tried to connect like other like open cases to him you know around the United States and and while they can try and connect him to him we're never going to know for certain and yeah I just I really enjoyed this I have heard that there are like uh, video recordings and like audio recordings of the interviews with him that you can listen to online which I haven't done yet but I do think I will but yeah I had never heard of Israel Keys before but yeah, this was so good. I definitely recommend it, especially if you have read All Be Gone in the Dark and you really enjoyed that. I do think that you're really going to enjoy this book. Then the next two are ones that I listened to on audio when we went on a road trip over Labor Day. And the first one was The Killer Across the Table by John Edward Douglas. And John Edward Douglas is actually the man who wrote Mindhunter. He was the man who um, started the profiling for the FBI that the Netflix show was actually based off of. Like the guy who plays Holden Ford is supposed to be like John Edward Douglas and actually Holden the guy who plays Holden Ford in the Netflix show actually narrates this book so if you are a fan of Mindhunters on Netflix I highly recommend this one and I recommend it on audio because it honestly felt like I was listening to like a podcast version of the show or like just listening to an extra episode it was narrated so well and oh, I was so into this so in this book um, he focuses on four different killers that aren't that aren't in the TV show, so they are different. However, he does bring up cases that are on the show, um, so I could like imagine those people in my head and stuff like that. And I knew a lot of the cases, but I just thought this was so fascinating. You know, a lot of it is like interviews with these people, and um, it also talks about like what he did after he left the bureau. Like he would work with jails and prisons when violent criminals were coming up for parole. They would sometimes hire him, or sometimes they do hire him, to go in and interview these people to see if they are still a threat to society. And yeah, this if you're into true crime and you love Mindhunters, I recommend picking this up. I thought it was done so well, and. Yeah, I want to read more books by John Edward Douglas. I think I actually will listen to them because um, I just, I like listening to true crime, but I definitely recommend this one. I will say, though, that some of the subject matter, obviously, is really hard to read or listen to. The first, um, the first killer that he talks about in the book actually murdered and raped this eight-year-old girl that came to his house selling Girl Scout cookies. And my oldest daughter is almost eight, so it was just... Ugh, it was sickening to listen to, but at the same time, I still, you know, there's still something about it, like him talking to these serial killers that I find interesting. So there is some very hard to read subject matter in the book that he doesn't shy away from, but like I said, I recommend it. Then the last book I listened to is one that I have to read the title of because I always forget it, and that is Savage Appetites, Four True Stories of Women, Crime, and Obsession by Rachel Monroe. And this was another book that I just loved. I thought the audiobook was done so well. It was so thought-provoking, and I just, I really enjoyed this. So in this book, Rachel Monroe is trying to trying to figure out why women and even herself are so interested in true crime. And in this book, she talks about four different women who are each connected to like true crimes or crimes in themselves um, throughout the book. So the first one in the first story, we learn about this woman who helped start like forensic science and what it is today. In the second one, we focus on um, the family of Sharon Tate, who obviously was murdered by the Manson family and how they've kind of really fought for like victim justice and victim rights and how that has kind of backfired just a little bit that one was really really made you think in the third one we are following this woman who falls in love with this man on death row but it isn't what you think and in the fourth one we learn about this girl who planned a mass murder a mass killing in um, in Canada with this young boy and like I said all of these were just so thought-provoking and interesting and yeah I highly recommend this I loved the audiobook and 
yeah, this is a new book that just came out, and I think a lot of people are really going to enjoy it. So those are all of the books that I have read recently. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know if you have any good true crime recommendations for me because I would love some. Um, I feel like I really want to get back into true crime, so I'd love some recommendations because I haven't read any in like years other than these books um, and I'll Be Gone in the Dark, obviously. And please leave me a comment down below if you've read any of these books and you have any thoughts on them because I'd love to chat about them. Um, but I think that's it for the day, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all again very soon. Happy reading. Bye.